A very good morning to everyone, esteemed dignitaries, distinguished guests, and dear Ragnalites. Before we proceed with today's ceremony, let us reflect on the words spoken by the Blessed Virgin Mary. And Mary said, My soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Her faith and trust in God, her humble acceptance of his miraculous ways, and her sincere efforts in fulfilling the Lord's will may appear to be overwhelming for us. But these very words teach us how we partake of divine grace and achieve the impossible when we align our endeavors with the divine plan. It is true, when we connect to that vast reservoir of infinite power and tranquility, all doubts dissipate, and what remains is pure, unadulterated love for him and his creation. It sure requires boundless faith to achieve it, to express one's gratitude to him by loving all his children alike. But a life lived with this realization becomes a melodious song, a jubilant celebration. And to understand the essence of human life, I quote the words of the poet Walt Pittman. The powerful play of life goes on, and you may contribute a verse. Dearly beloved, today we celebrate one such profound verse, a song so well sung that it has struck a chord with innumerable lives and finds its echoes all around it. It is an honor to witness this celebration of 50 years of service to the Lord, to mankind. Today we hear about the journey of this song and wish to be inspired with the beauty of this verse, written by our very dearest Father Carvalho. And as we begin with the second part of the felicitation ceremony, we would once again like to extend a warm welcome to everyone gathered here. Our students will now present bouquets of flowers to our special dignitaries. Shorya Bansal, the speaker of our school parliament, will now welcome Most Reverend Anil Joseph Thomas Kuto, Archbishop of Delhi. Jismol Joseph, the General Secretary of our School Parliament, will now welcome Most Reverend Sebastian Mascarenas, Bishop of Baroda. Thank you, Your Grace. Mithil Mukara, the General Secretary of our School Parliament, will now welcome the Most Reverend Theodore Mascarenas, Auxiliary Bishop of Ranchi. Thank you, Your Grace. Trisha Manoj, the Environment Minister of our School Parliament, welcomes the Most Reverend Deepak Valerian Thoro, Auxiliary Bishop of Archdiocese of Delhi. Ishan Bisaria, the head boy of our school parliament, will now welcome Reverend Father Carvalho. <laughs> Christina Beju, the head girl of our school parliament, welcomes Reverend Father Bento. <laughs> Sirat Kaur, captain of Kurunanak House, welcomes Parish Priest of St. Luke's Church, Reverend Father Vincent. <laughs> Sukmani Sethi, the captain of Vivekananda House, will now welcome Mr. Francesco Sardina, MP from Goa. <laughs> we welcome Sir Alastair Fries, Principal, Father Agnes School, Noida. We welcome Sister Navya, Principal, Father Agnes School, Vaishali. Thank you. 
We now welcome Mr. Joji, Acting Principal, Father Agnes School, Greater Noida. A special token of appreciation for our dear Father Roy, Principal, Father Agnes School, Delhi. Next, we welcome Ma'am Srija, our ex-Vice Principal, <laughs> Father Agnes School. And now, we welcome the family members of Father Carvalho. We welcome his sisters, Miss Alzira, <laughs> Miss Francesca, Miss Teresina, Miss Otelia. We also welcome his nephew, Mr. Dheeraj. 50 years of selfless service is without doubt the most sublime form of faith. This faith is of one who has accepted the Lord as his spiritual guide. Mankunto Mola, a famous Kawali composed by the famous Sufi saint Amir Khusro, speaks of this faith, one's complete and graceful surrender to him. The students of Father Agil School Delhi will now present a blend of Sufi, Kathak, Bharatnatyam and Mohiniyatam to this famous song expressing our heartfelt gratitude to the Almighty for blessing us with His beloved disciple. My God, you have given me all. Behold, the little I give you. Give me the strength to give more. Who is the priest? He is not rich, for he has abandoned himself. He is not powerful, for he is obedient to another. Yet if we had not the priest, we should not have our Lord. Who was it that received your soul on its entrance into life? The priest. And if that soul comes to the death of sin, who will restore it to calmness and peace? The priest. Who nourishes it to give it strength to make its pilgrimage? The priest. And what is your true food? The precious body and blood of our Lord. Who makes ready this feast? And who offers this sacrifice? The other graces of God would be of no avail to us without the priest. It is he who opens the door. The priest is not a priest for himself. He does not give himself absolution. He does not administer the sacraments to himself. He is not for himself. He is for you. Prepare your soul to appear before God by washing it for the last time in the blood of Jesus Christ, the priest. The priest will not understand the greatness of his office until he is in heaven. If he understood it on earth, he would die. Not of fear, but of love. The priesthood is the love of the heart of Jesus. When you see the priest, think of our Lord, Jesus Christ.
Thank you, dear children. That was a divine performance indeed. We thank Ma'am Maker for training them so well. Father Roy walks with us, is one of us, and his comforting and reassuring presence gives us the courage and confidence to fulfill our responsibilities sincerely. We invite Father Roy Deesa, Principal Father Agnel School, New Delhi, to deliver the welcome address. Most Reverend Anil Kutho, Archbishop of Delhi. Most Reverend Sebastian Masquenas, Bishop of Baroda. Most Reverend Theodore Masquenas, Auxiliary Bishop of Ranchi and Apostolic Administrator of Dalton Ganj. Most Reverend Deepak Toro, Auxiliary Bishop of Delhi. Father Carvalho, the Jubilarian. Father Bento, the Regional Superior of Agnel Region. Justice Mehta, sisters and nephew of Father Carvalho, fathers and sisters of the diocese, principals of our sister schools, alumni, well-wishers, teachers, and the participating students. A very good morning to all of you and a warm welcome to the second half of the celebration. After having celebrated the gift of 50 years of priesthood, to Father Carvalho in the Holy Mass, we now come to the celebration of song and dance, creativity and talent by the staff and students of the Agnell institutions. Dear friends, your presence in such great numbers from far and wide this morning is a tribute to the way in which Father Carvalho has lived his priesthood and touched your lives in different ways. It is this spirit of genuine gratitude to God for the witness and the service given by Father Carvalho over all these years that has pulled us here today to celebrate the priesthood of Father Carvalho. When I stand here today, there is only one word that I can say to sum up the mood of this occasion, and that is thank you. Thank you for having put Father Carvalho on our path of life. Thank you for the happy priest that he is, a priest who is in love with Jesus and his mission, giving people a reason for living and a reason for hoping. When St. John Mary Vianney was asked, who is a priest? He replied saying that a priest is the compassion of the heart of Jesus, who not only uses his head and heart to contemplate on the mystery of God, but also who places his feet on the dust of the earth, touching people's lives with acts of compassion and kindness. This is what you are, Father Carvalho, and we feel blessed to have known you as a medium who take people to God and who bring God to people through your selfless acts of service for the last 50 years. Father, you are precious to us. And we thank you for making the lives of those, whom you of those who encountered you happy and blissful. The glory of life is to love, to give, to serve. You have always loved spontaneously, given freely, and served generously. Your career has been marked with sincerity, integrity, courage, and a spotless life. And this has only been possible because God has always been the anchor, the magnet, the compass of your life. As we congratulate you on your maiden half century as a priest, I pray for your good health. May you always live your yes like Mother Mary in all circumstances that you find yourself in. In particular, may he continue to give the energy the enthusiasm, the passion, and the zest for life, which is the envy of many. Dear Father, the second half of the celebration is a tribute from the Agnel family to say thank you to you for being the epitome of what defines a priest, or in fact, what it means to be a human. Once again, a warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for coming. And God bless you. Thank you, Father.
Words fall short to express how truly remarkable 50 years of unconditional service is. Let's catch a glimpse of Father Carvalho's journey in the quest of spirituality in the form of a dance drama, The Divine Emissary. I invite the students of Father Agnell School, Greater Noida, on stage. servant of God, his Eucharistic celebration is authentic enough to lead and to serve the needs of God's people. He is the Divine Emissary. Now he stands here in North India. Having been blessed with the divine trait of connecting with people, he was chosen to work in Delhi and start his mission in the North with his comrade priest, Father Bento Rodriguez. More and more people got connected with him and joined in this endeavor that brought out significant difference in the lives of many. He established institutions for the poor in the most substantial way to accomplish the mission. He embodies our motto, love your neighbor as yourself, enabling the children for a purposeful and meaningful living. And that comes with an understanding of the self and the world around.
opened the school in Koda Colony. His compassion is limitless. The same is experienced by the children of Delhi slums. With the vision of serving the destitute, he gave his hand to raise the children devoid of love and support. He fulfills this vision by taking the Pal Bhavan children in his loving shed. मेरी आत्मा प्रभु को धन्य कहो मेरे अंतर्मन उसके पवित्र नाम की स्तुति करो मेरी आत्मा प्रभु को धन्य कहो और उसका एक भी वरदान कभी नहीं भुलाओ Thank you, dear children. I thank Ma'am Shikha Yadav, Ma'am Nimisha, and Sir Anthony for training the students. His Holiness Pope Francis appointed Father Sebastian Mascarenas, SFX, as the Bishop of Baroda on 31st December 2022. Bishop Mascarenas, former Superior General. of the missionaries of St Francis Xavier Pillar Fathers was born on July 29th 1959 in the archdiocese of Goa and Daman after having completed his secular and ecclesiastical studies in Goa and Nagpur he was ordained priest on May 6th 19 1984 he served in the mission station of Dadar and Nagar Haveli in various capacities as an assistant parish priest principal and chaplain he was in germany for his higher studies and pursued his doctorate in systematic theology in germany he was also the provincial superior of mumbai province bishop sebastian mascarenas is the brother of most reverend theodore mascarenas auxiliary bishop of ranchi an apostolic administrator of daltanganj i request most reverend sebastian mascarenas bishop of baroda to address the gathering on this special occasion i'll just address father alarico to cut short all the others dear father alarico and all the guests over here i just read a quote from rabindranath tagore in gujarati which sounds much better in gujarati but i think only peter understands here the gap the chasm between man and man is infinite 
what would we do if the divine were not to bridge it? It's a very beautiful thought and it embodies what Father Alarik stands for. Jesus bridged the chasm and Father Alarik is called to live Jesus and give Jesus. That is the embodiment of a priest, to live Jesus and give Jesus. I worked with him for about five years just in the meetings and I'll just say one word that tells us how this chasm is bridged between man and man through the divine and through us, magnanimity. God opened his arms on the cross, died for us, came into the world with arms open. And magnanimity has, for me, three very important facets which we live, and that is to live Jesus, what Father Alarik has done. First thing is open for everyone. When we look at this diversity which is brought up on this stage, that is the fruit of being open to everyone, the first quality. The second quality, there's a specific openness to the poor and the downtrodden, which is extremely important. Jesus in his Gospels always went for the poor, the people who were put away. That is the second aspect of magnanimity. And the third aspect of magnanimity, of a big heart, is forgiveness. That is the meaning of living Jesus, which I think Father Aglariko has done. And giving Jesus is exactly the same to enable others to be magnanimous. And when I look at all the institutions that have come over here, it's not about the buildings and what we have done. It's about the people, it's about the teachers, the kids, the children who give Jesus by their magnanimity what they have been, which is contagious and has been taught over here. Father Alarik, you are a magnanimous person, you have lived Jesus, you have given Jesus, that is why we honor you today. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you, Your Grace. A true leader finds his way through rough waters, stays composed and leads the rest through raging storms. He recognizes the strengths in the weakest of all and guides them to achieve the most incredible. Here's a tribute to one such leader amongst us, the most revered and inspiring, our dear Father Karwalo. Let us all put our hands together for a heartwarming performance by Father Agnes School, Vaishali. <laughs>
leader. A leader is someone who inspires others to achieve, instilling belief in those who do not believe. A sense of calm, an all-arounder persists. The air-splitting cry of the pessimist. When the way is lost to fall or ramble, not to blindly wander on or ramble, but find a better route, or with resolve to fight on through. Reach the goal. And not to shoulder the burden in isolation, but recognize that their determination is shared by others, and clearly see that their strength lies not in I, but we. A leader is someone who inspires others to achieve, instilling belief in those who do not believe. Through future lean, through timeless tear, their vision is and remains clear. Thank you, dear children. That was a lively performance. I thank Mr. Harendra Singh and Ms. Srishti for guiding our students. Most Reverend Bishop Theodore Mascarenhas was born on 9th November 1960 in Goa. After having completed his secular and ecclesiastical studies in Goa and Nagpur, he was ordained priest on 24th April 1988. He holds a post graduate degree in political science from the Nagpur University and a licentiate and doctorate in sacred scripture from the Pontifical Biblical Institute, Rome. After his ordination, he served as a pastor, vice principal and principal in Punjab. He was the coordinator of the works of the Society of Pilar in Rome and also 
the superior delegate, delegate for the Society of the Missionaries of St. Francis Xavier in Europe. He was an official of the Pontifical Council for Culture and is a lecturer in sacred scripture at the Pontifical Gregorian University and at the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas, Rome. He was appointed Auxiliary Bishop of Ranchi on 9th July 2014. From March 2016 to June 2019, he was a Secretary General of the CBCI. His Holiness Pope Francis appointed His Grace as the new Apostolic Administrator of the Diocese of Dalton Ganj in Jharkhand on 8th December 2021 to his present, in addition to his present office as Auxiliary Bishop of Ranchi. We request Most Reverend Theodore Mascarenes, Auxiliary Bishop of Ranchi, to address the gathering. Dear Father Carvalho, Bishops, my dear friends, Father Bento has given me three minutes to speak about Father Carvalho. And I think I'll accept the challenge. But there are three reasons for probably. One, because the program is so long. Second, there's so much to speak about him that if you start, you won't end. And the third, audience always likes short speeches. Uh, dear Father Carvalho, I'm here to appreciate you and congratulate you. 50 years is a long time. But I think you have worked more than 50 years because he doesn't know the meaning of time. He doesn't know the meaning of sickness. And that, in that lies his greatness. Gifted with a big generosity of heart, love for the poor, as Sebi said earlier, and a complete commitment to the mission. You are a gift to our society of Pilar. You are a gift to the church and you are a gift to humanity. We are grateful to God that he brought you down to us on this earth as a star that can shine for us. A star that not only brightens the sky, but brightens the lives of people. I'm here to assure you of our prayers and to wish you all the best for the future. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Grace. A true believer in equality of mankind, Father Carvalho has tirelessly worked for the benefit of the less fortunate. He has always believed in the dignity of every man and so has been able to bring out the best in everyone. The students of Father Agnel School, Noida, will now present a dance recital, The Man with a Golden Heart, which echoes the same sentiments, and it will be followed by a duet dedicated to their champion.
भरने हैं वे जो मेल कराने वाले हैं क्योंकि वे परमेश्वर के पुत्र कहलाएंगे आइए इस प्रेरणादायक प्रस्तुति के माध्यम से हम सब ईश्वर से प्रार्थना करें और अपने मनुष्य जीवन का सही अर्थ समझते हुए उत्थान की ओर अग्रसर हो हमारे और नियत साफ हो काम हो अच्छे हमारे और नियत साफ हो है वही इंसान जहा इंसानियत का वास हो है वही जहाँ इंसानियत का वास हो काम अच्छे हमारे और नियत साफ हो है वही इंसान जहाँ इंसानियत का वास हो है वही इंसान जहाँ इंसानियत का रब भी देता है दुआएं ऐसे उस हम दर्द को को जिसके दिल में ऐसी प्यास हो है वही इंसान जहाँ इंसानियत का वास हो है वही इंसान जहाँ इंसानियत का वास हो प्यार देकर प्यार पाना कर्म है इंसान का मानव है तो मानवता ही धर्म है इंसान का प्यार देकर प्यार पाना कर्म है इंसान प्रेम का निवास हो है वही इंसान जहाँ इंसानियत का वास हो है वही इंसान जहाँ इंसानियत का वास हो काम हो अच्छे हमारे और नियत साफ हो
We thank you, dear children, for expressing your love for Father so beautifully. Thank you, Ms. Trina, Ms. Geetu, and Ms. Seema for your guidance. Most Reverend Bishop Deepak Valerian Toro was born on 2nd August 1967 in Karnataka. After having completed his philosophical and theological studies, he was ordained a priest on May 10th, 1996 for the Diocese of Muzaffarpur. Reverend Bishop Toro earned his Masters in Spirituality and Counseling at Dharmaram Vidyakshetram in Bangalore. Since his priestly ordination, he has held various positions as the parish priest, rector, secretary of the Bishop of Muzaffarpur, director of the Diocesan Youth Forum, as a secretary of Bihar, Jharkhand and Andaman's Bishop's Council. Pope Francis appointed Father Deepak Valerian Toro as Auxiliary Bishop of Archdiocese of Delhi on July 16, 2021. We are happy to have you, Your Grace. We request you to address the gathering. All my distinguished friends and uh, dear Father Karvalo, unlike uh, Bishop Theodore, Father Bento hasn't set any time limit for me, so I can speak longer. Uh, Father Karvalo, you know very well that I'm new to Delhi. I'm new to you also. Of course, I have experienced you as a very affectionate person. Uh, but I must tell you today that I've heard a lot about you. Uh, no wild imaginations, please. Eh? Whatever I heard is positive and good. But one thing that I've repeatedly heard of you is that Father Jose Carvalho is a very generous person. And this generosity of the heart is not occasional, but regular and timely. So therefore, I believe this is a special blessing bestowed upon you by the Lord himself. And all your achievements, whatever we heard and we saw, we'll be seeing again, I believe are the graces of God flowing into the lives of people through you. And you see, since you have been very faithful to the Lord in exercising this great gift, the Lord himself is very generous towards you. He has gifted you this celebration today. Not many make it to celebrate 50 years, but you have got this privilege. And as you march towards your diamond jubilee now, I wish and pray that the gift the Lord has given to you may continue to flourish in you and become blessing for many more people. Congratulations and God bless you. Thank you, Your Grace. I now invite Annette and Rida to sing the duet to Father with Love. Thank you. 
heartfelt rendition indeed thank you dear children father karwalo we know how much you love the purest forms of art and music holds a special place in your life and so what better way to express gratitude to the lord than through a musical rendition the western music choir of father agnel school delhi would like to praise and thank the lord for blessing us with your presence in our lives stunning performance thank you children thank you ma'am jadeda justice sri ml mehta joined the delhi judicial service on 20th may 1977 he has held office as metropolitan magistrate commercial civil judge joint registrar delhi high court and so on he was promoted to delhi higher judicial service in 1996 and has worked as additional sessions judge additional district judge 
special judge tada special judge cbi etc he established delhi mediation center at karkar duma court complex and worked there as full time judge in charge and coordinator as a designated trainer he has imparted training in mediation to the lawyers and judges in delhi and in different parts of the country he has worked as principal secretary law justice and legislative affairs government of nct of delhi from 2009 to 2010 and was elevated to the bench of delhi high court on 3rd december 2010 we request the honorable justice shri ml mehta to address the audience reverend archbishop bishops of different parts of country priest chief priest principals staff of the school and the members of the agnal family students ladies and gentlemen it is indeed a proud moment for me indeed you see i have been asked to speak one minute more than bishop four minutes <laughs> but i cannot finish in four minutes because you see i have worked with father carvalho father bento for more than 40 decades four decades and if i am asked to speak something about this pair's accomplishments and achievements particularly of father carvalho i think i can finish may not be able to finish by the end of the day even i am associated and fortunate enough to be associated with humble soul for the last so many years i have seen him going from a small room to all that you have seen <clears throat> now speaking for delhi i may tell you uh, bishop or bishop and bishops and others that father carvalho has not only be a gift to agnal charities and agnal family but to a gift to delhi also he is a known educationist he is activist also education activist we have uh, people filing pils in the court but he is a revolutionary in education as all that all that you have seen and heard about him from the previous speakers and also by the presentations i am fully and fully evidential substantive and corroborative evidence for that because i have seen him i am associated with the governing council since maybe four decades before maybe little more than that and the way he works in the school and outside the school in terms of his academic involvements other activities in the governing council we have sometime some differences of opinion but we agree to disagree some places in fact you see it it was my mentor mr k r chavla advocate he is a senior advocate he is not well so i may be taking as speaking for him as well because we have same wavelength same page same mindset so far as father carvalho is working is concerned all that we have seen what i have seen in him is that he is full of full of competencies capacity buildings capabilities compassion accepting challenges you see i have seen this schools from day 1 when this was land was allotted and how many challenges the school has faced and how those have been dealt with meticulously and with all what about the k on the ways beside that he is uh, i have seen a great leadership in him he is great creative visionary and 
the Reverend Bishop said about his malignant personality of openness, particularly for the downtrodden and the poor. I have seen him seeing in the governing councils. Sometime academic uh, administration departments proposes hike in the fee for the students and being so much uh, responsible for the economic and uh, financial aspects of the institution, he still takes care to see to it that the poor people are not harmed, they are not prejudiced. Always he will, sometime he will, he will go against the governing council majority also with regard to the increase in fees and may not agree despite that the fees hiked in different schools in the city and despite that the, even the government permits for that he says there is no need for hike because the people cannot afford it particularly in the corona uh, covid period you have seen it so father carvalho you are god blessed you are blessed and so much blessed that we are all so happy that we are also blessed that we are associated with you you are a very upright person. I have seen him very upright, very modest, very composed, very compassionate, as simple, as modest and humble as grass, and as strong as banyan tree or redwood tree. This is his quality. He would stand for the cause, help the downtrodden, whatever may come on the way, achieve his goals with all the leadership command because he knows how to take the things along and how to take the people along. So with this, I am very, very fortunate to be associated with you, Father. I am really blessed also. So is my elder brother, K.R. Chavala. He has not been able to come, so his wife is here. And uh, we also wish, she also wishes you and all of, us, all of us wish you a very good health, very good future. And your 50 years of priesthood is really a remarkable one. And we are really proud of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Your words resonate, there's a words in our heart. Our dear Father Karvalo, who has served endlessly the humanity, had planted a tree at Koda in 2008 with a vision. He named it Agnil Jan, Jan Kalyan Kendra and nurtured it with his heart and soul. The tree has grown so big that thousands of underprivileged find shelter and peace under its shade. Today, students of the Kendra present a dance drama, Endless Service to Humanity, depicting their beautiful journey. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Maake kar me raj me se pehle hi, maine tumko jaan liya, aur utpad hone se pehle, maine tera abhishek kiya hai. everything to serve, to save and to love the people.
father has been doing a lot for the poor children and the people at Kora since many years. These are the children who are very close to Father Karwale. They are hungry, destitute, marginalized, naked, illiterate, sick and needy. It is Father who works through his teachers who visit them, feed them, clothe them, treat them, educate them, and most importantly, love them. Father makes these children independent in various ways. They learn computer skills, skills in beauty culture, cutting and tailoring, music, there is a healthcare center and many women are empowered. This was a dream of father and it is fulfilled. Wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also a love of humanity. of life is that all that is really worth doing is what we do for others. cuts and 
and divides like a pair of scissors. The heart sews things together and unites like a needle. The tailor uses both. Women empowerment. Mahila jo kehti hai, maine safarta ke liye kabhi sapna nahi dekha, balki iske liye kadi mehnat aur kaam kiya hai. Congratulate Father for the endless selfless service and working for 50 years tirelessly in the vineyard of God. Of class 7 were ready to be given in marriage to 50 plus 
16 old men by their parents. It is a father who acted very promptly and saved the future of those two girls. A boy whose life could be in darkness forever. It is again father who helped the boy to regain his eyesight. Now the boy knows the difference between day and night and enjoys the beauty of nature. During COVID-19, when everybody was busy saving his or her life, our dear father was busy in distributing the rations, masks, sanitizers, and oxygen machines through AJKK. Till date, ration is being distributed at Khoda. A minor girl was saved from sexual abuse through child helpline by our dear father. More than three TV patients were well taken care of and treated well. One of them has already recovered and other two are on speedy recovery. And after every 45 days, 100 people are placed in jobs, both in garments and retail industry. Finally, very recently, just a month ago, father has saved the life of the boy sitting here, Abhishek, whose skull was broken and he suffered a very serious brain injury. Abhishek was taken to AIMS in Delhi immediately in need of blood. Father was standing at the door of blood bank to donate even his blood. Thank you, dear children, for giving us a glimpse of all the noble work Father has done. Thank you, Mr. Ajit, Mr. Michael, Ms. Neha Singh, Ms. Manisha, and Ms. Mehronisa. And now, I would like to invite on stage a special guest who has been with us as a teacher and a vice principal, and for whom Father Carvalho hasn't only been a principal, rather a confidant, a mentor, and a guide. And I'm sure Ma'am has a lot of memories to share on this momentous day. I request our beloved Ma'am Srija to address the gathering. Thank you, Priti Kriti. If we could have the lights on in the auditorium so I can see everybody. See Father Carvalho? <laughs> and his many expressions. Thank you. Um, Father Bento, <laughs> may I ask your permission to exceed a little bit of the three-minute limit? You know, when, when I got the, when Sharu called me and she told me it's three minutes, I said, oh dear, you, they do this in the Oscars. At the end of the prize distribution award ceremony, the awardee has to speak for three minutes and then the music starts playing. So I was worried that's going to happen and then I found that everybody's got a three-minute limit. Uh, eloquently spoken about Father Carvalho. There's nothing left to say, is there? And yet, here I am wanting to speak. It's not every day that we have this moment, so bear with me if I do exceed that little time limit. Um, just as Mehta Ji, you said it so beautifully, for us at Agnels, the schools, Father Carvalho was an activist, a revolutionary. And we were at the receiving end of that, let me tell you. Our teachers sitting here will vouch for that. He was not an easy person to deal with. Of course, compassionate, generous, and all of those wonderful platitudes. But he was one of the toughest taskmasters I have known 
and thank God for that. I, this twinkle in his eyes and that crooked, I like to call it wicked smile because we don't know what's afoot. And we are all wondering what's going to happen now, what's going to happen. His, the day's disasters in the morning phase, uh, I'm trying to quote from Oliver Goldsmith. Uh, he's, been, he's been an enigma for all of us. I doubt if there are words sufficient to describe him. But there was one thing that drove everything that happened here, and that was we had to get better than what we were yesterday. That was the light. And clearly, this is a man we have seen father. I'm so grateful, I'm honored, that I've spent 10 years as a vice principal watching him work closely. And I've seen Father Carvalho walk into the school, his body tormented with pain, and he would still carry on. I mean, this is a person that refused to rest. There was something inside of him, this driving force that was driving him forward. And over the years, I realized that it was his faith. His life is built on, and that's, that those are words that are engraved in my heart, the bedrock of the it's the foundation of the teachings of Lord Jesus. I think that's his sustenance, his strength. He dipped into it every time. And then he came out, emerged with superhuman capacities. One moment it was uh, uh, impartus, okay, lecture capturing. Uh, all of, all of our dear children, I mean, it's a marvel, okay? Every time I stand here and I watch the four schools, the Jan Kalyan Kendra and the Bal Bhavan, I mean, they come together. I marvel at two men that made it happen, Father Carvalho and Father Bento. And clearly, this superhuman feat could not have happened if they did not dip deep inside of them into that uh, divine spark. And that is what Father Carvalho believed all of us had. You know, we loved to sit in our ordinariness. Why on earth would we move past that mediocrity? I did not want to do that, because that meant walking the difficult path. I didn't, I mean, it was so easy to go to the class and pick up the book and teach. CBS is anyway brought it to that level that it makes it easy. But he just wouldn't rest. Our NIDs and our uh, lecture capturings and everything, everything that we did here, our lesson planning, was pushing us forward into, some, into that sphere of excellence. He believed that we were divine beings and we were meant to be, we must aspire to be excellent, to be better than who we were yesterday. And every day he would push it into us, drive it home to us. From the bulakat, he would call us the bulakat generation. He would say, get off your bulakats. You had a lovely time, now get off your bulakats and stop. There's another age that's happening. I doubt if there is a school in this nation during the COVID when we, went off, when we went off school, moved online as seamlessly as we did. I doubt it. Ma'am Susan Jacob, who was a, was a ex-principal, will vouch for it. We moved seamlessly, ladies and gentlemen, because we were equipped despite our resistance, and God, did we not resist. We were his biggest naysayers. We just didn't want to get up to do the next thing, take it to the next level. But he pushed it. Like, that, like the shepherd that will not let his flock behind, he took us along with him on his journey, on this adventure, that calling, that he answered this calling from God. His students are inspired by it. His students are ignited by it. 
And we've seen that on the stage, such an overflow of love and affection, reverence. And how is it that this can happen? We are indebted. I'm, I will always be part of the Agnel family, wherever I am. And on behalf of every staff, teacher, student, who's been here over the ages, we thank God for Father Carvalho. Thank God for what he has done for us, shaped us. If I'm speaking today the way I am, I owe it in a large measure to Father Carvalho. He could just stand there and I would be shaking. Because I know if I've got one word wrong, I've had it. Mediocrity was not his style. He wanted the best from every one of us. You better stand here and give your best. If not, though he's a large-hearted man, he liked to tell us the gate is open. He'd like to tell us you can leave, but never, never has it happened. The worst of us, he has handheld and walked with us. But he will never let us settle down at all. And for those of you who are here, dear teachers, you're so blessed. Because you know, and, and um, Father Bento is looking at the watch. Yeah. He's another enigma. And when he looks at us, I, I'm pretending not to look at Father Bento. Uh, just one little uh, incident is when he walks into the school, we decide how his mood is. This lovely twinkle in the face, uh, eyes and the cheerful face, and everybody's, oh, it's sunshine time. Aap ja sakte hain, Father Karwalo se milne. And that same, and there's a, I think the invite came, when it came to me, <laughs> Father Karwalo, thunderous. That's a side that pushed us forward. And this is the side that held us when we were down, held us up and said, come walk with us. We are meant to walk. We are divine beings. We can't settle down for less. So Father, I'm, I'm grateful. I can't even stop telling you how grateful I am. And I'm sure everyone here, every teacher and student will say the same thing, will echo everything that I've said. So I think it's five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you, Father Bento. I'm so honored to have, to have been part of this celebration. I hope the school continues to grow under the guidance of Father Bento and Father Carvalho. And uh, the next time I come, there'll be a fifth school. It should be wonderful. So thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. It was a pleasure to have you back on stage once again. And we couldn't have described Father any better. The students at Agnels, too, have always held deepest regard and respect for their beloved Father Carvalho, for his love and support for them is unconditional. And even though they may have graduated and have been out of their second home, they are assured that Father is literally just a call away from them. Such has been his connect with his students. And we have with us our alumna, Achal Bhalla from the batch of 2001, who would like to speak a, word, a few words on this special day. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, it's been a pleasure and honor to be here, a part of this celebration, and to share a few words with you. Uh, everyone has spoken so highly about Father, but I'm the only one who has the liberty to embarrass him today, because I'm allowed to do that, right? So uh, everyone has uh, seen him as a, a, a family, a priest, a, a principal. Uh, I graduated 22 years back, and he was my principal then. And I have lots of things uh, about, to, uh, about him to say as a principal. He was the coolest principal you can ever have. Uh, a small incident, we 
finished our class 11th exam and it was a maths exam and it was a very, very tough one. We wanted to celebrate but we didn't know that should we actually go out to celebrate or should we just sulk because the paper didn't go too well. Uh, we were all standing downstairs near the stage and he comes and he's like, what are you guys doing here? We like, we're thinking, should we go out or not? He's like, okay, everyone sit in the car. This is the time when uh, he took us to Barista for the first time and uh, we didn't even know there are any coffee shops. It had just opened up. So a new concept where you can go and sit, have a coffee and sit for hours. So it was our school principal who introduced us to the concept of a coffee shop and chilling with you know, your friends, your family. And um, of course, my other friends from different schools were always jealous that we had this amazing, cool bonding with our principal where we could just walk into his room to discuss anything. Uh, you know, usually the protocol is if you need a permission, you go to your class teacher or you go to your supervisor and then you go to the principal. It was always the easiest to just go directly to the principal for us. Uh, you know, also one thing which uh, I've learned from this institution, and when I say this institution, a major part is Father Carvalho, is empathy. Because, uh, you know, for so many years of being in the school, Bad Bhavan was under construction. And we used to always think, when is this going to get opened up? Uh, when I was in class 12th, the inauguration happened, and few students had gone, and I went with Father. Uh, you know, there are few instances in your life which you remember forever. That day, the gleam in his eye and, you know, like the proud feeling he had when he was showing us around and telling us what and how and where and, you know, what all had gone behind it. And I could see that, you know, so many years of hard work and every little thought about, it just changed my life, my perspective about life, that we all think about ourselves, but how selflessly, if you think about a little bit about others, and I feel even if 1% I have become like that, it's all thanks to this great man sitting here. Uh, he still calls me every year on my birthday, and that's one phone call I always look forward to. That's how important it is, uh, you know, that's the kind of relationship and bond we share. So Father, on behalf of everyone I know who has, uh, you know, uh, passed out from this school, we thank you just for being you and yourself. You know, you're a great person, and I think a great person is someone who makes others shine and every student who's come out of this institution and is shining bright is thanks to this person. And thank you so much. I'm really grateful for it. Thank you, Achal. Father, the list of students who wish to express their gratitude doesn't just end here. We have with us today one of the students of the first batch of the Bal Bhavan who would like to share her thoughts with you. I invite Chanchana to come up on the stage. Very warm greetings to everyone, especially to Father Carvalho. Thank you all so much for gracing us with esteemed presence. Living to celebrate a priestly ordination golden jubilee is something that would forever bring joy, not only to the heart of the celebrant, but also to all of us, as indeed is a glorious milestone. The celebrant is a spiritual mentor who is a dear and a passionate man of God who's not only a priest but a man after God's heart with a dynamic personality. Yes, I'm talking about our dearest Father Carvalho. I deem it a great honor to stand before you all to share a few words on this memorable occasion. On the onset, Father, I congratulate you on behalf of entire Agnel family. May God bless you with a jubilant heart on your jubilee anniversary. As we celebrate your life, we pray that Almighty God continue to use you as the mouthpiece for our lives and voice against operation. Knowing that I have a limited slot, I have picked up a few special moments from the beautiful chapters of my life, which I have been fortunate enough to be able to share with Father, especially during my life journey of the 10 wonderful years at Bal Bhavan, which was and still is in a board of peace, and of course, at school, which was the best of all. Father, you have touched our life in many folds. In fact, you still continue to do so especially through your magical words of inspiration. 
Your energy and enthusiasm towards life is truly contagious. You have helped us look at our life with a better and broader perspective. As I turn back my chapters of the year 2000, the very first thing I can think of is when you came as an angel in Manipur, my homeland, and ever since, my life has been completely changed to a different tangent altogether. One reason why I'm standing here is all because of his love and devotion towards kids. He has been an angel not only in my life, but also to all Abalbon kids whom he and Father Bento dearly gave a new life with abundance of love and care, with education which has brought us to new heights beyond words, exactly in a way how the famous Japanese philosophy of wabi-sabi, which has derived from the art of Kintsuki, explains. Both the fathers have accepted us the way we were, wounded and broken in some way, yet accepted and embraced us with open arms and helped us grow and bloom with our flaws within and have put us all in a pedestal of love and love alone, which God can fathom, which only God can fathom. Coming back to my experience, Father took care of me not only with a fatherly care, but also showered me with a motherly care. It was back in 2006 when I was selected as one of the national basketball players for the UP team, and surprisingly, I was the only one who got selected from our school as well as, well as from our zonal level. Believe me when I say more than me, Father was excited knowing that I would be representing our school our zone, our district, and our state UP. UP because I am an alumina of Father Ignal School Noida batch of 2010. Before I left for my selection, the very first thing that I received from Father was a kit made specially for me. The kit had a bucket hat with a matching t-shirt and socks which had Agnels embroidered on them. For me, it was heartbreakingly sweet, as I didn't expect him to do that for me, yet he did it with utmost love. Father, thank you so very much for that loving gesture and for everything that you have done. Well, this is not the end. When I had to be away from school for a month and a half, Father made sure that I was accompanied with a caretaker. Such is his love and care for his students. Along with the caretaker, father made sure that I stay in touch with my mom, so he gave me a phone to with fully loaded data pack so that there was no hindrance in connectivity. He would call me up every single day to check on me. The beauty of his soul just spoke aloud in every action that he did. With this experience of mine, all I want to tell you all is that Father Carvalho is a man with copious amount of love who does what he does with a touch of magical depth and that is all and that is why all his endeavors are engraved in our hearts. Thank you. Now our Balbon children are ready to sing a medley of songs in a choir. The first song is the Jubilee song. We have modified it, not the melody, but the style. We have made a part of it a cappella style. It is our applause and gratitude to the Jubilarian who has touched our lives in an undeniable and definite way. The rest of the songs are his directions, which are a part of our lives. So listen and praise God. It's a time of joy, a time of peace, a time to lift our hands to God, a time to recall all our graces. It's a time to touch, a time to reach, a time of sharing the gifts we have, a time to build a world that is one. It's the time to give thanks, to the Father Almighty God And with Mary, our mother, we sing this song Open your hearts to the Lord And begin to see the mystery That we are all together as one family The 
significant part of the felicitation program, the felicitation ceremony. We invite our esteemed guests for the day, Most Reverend Anil Kuto, Archbishop of Delhi Diocese, Reverend Theodore Mescarenas, Auxiliary Bishop of Ranchi, Reverend Deepak Toro, Auxiliary Bishop of Delhi, Reverend Sebastio Mascarenas, Bishop of Baroda, Reverend Father Garvalo, Reverend Father Bento, and Reverend Father Roy and Father Carvalho's family members on the days. We now, we now request His Grace Archbishop Anil Koto to present a shawl to Reverend Father Carvalho. We now, re we now request Fa Rev Reverend Father Bento to present a shawl to His Grace Archbishop Anil Koto. We request we request Reverend Father Bento to present a shawl to His Grace Bishop Sebastio Mascarenas. We request Reverend Father Bento to present a shawl to His Grace Auxiliary Bishop Theodore Mascarenas. We now request Father Bento to present a token of gratitude to the family members of Father Carvalho. We now request Father Roy to present a shawl to Reverend Father Bento. Thank you, Your Grace. Thank you, Fathers. We are honored to have with us for the felicitation ceremony His Grace, Archbishop Anil Koto. His Grace was born on 22nd December 1954 in Goa. After having completed his secular and ecclesiastical studies in Goa, he went on to complete Master of Theology in Ecumenism at Vidya Jyoti and acquired his doctorate 
in ecumenical theology at St. Thomas Aquinas Pontifical University, Rome. He was ordained a priest for Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Delhi on 8th February 1981. On 17th January 2001, he was appointed Auxiliary Bishop of Delhi. He was transferred as Bishop of Jalanthar on 24th February 2007. On December 2nd, 2012, he was appointed the Archbishop of Delhi. He serves as the Chairman of the Conference of the Catholic Bishops of India for Ecumenism. He is a member of the Commission for Interreligious Dialogue of the Catholic Bishops Conference of India. We request your grace to address the gathering. Dear Brother Bishops and our Jubilarian and uh, members of the family of Father Alarico Carvalho and uh, distinguished guest, I don't have much to say because everything has been said. I endorse it a hundred times or maybe two hundred times, having known Father Carvalho for the last, I think, almost 45 years or so. But what I would like to say today is uh, that the Archdiocese of Delhi is very specially indebted to the Society of Pilar for your collaboration with us and uh, the Agnel Fathers and a stellar role in this beautiful collaboration has been played by Father Carvalho. And uh, one of the shine, most shining examples is uh, this parish that is called the St. Luke's Parish of Defense Colony and the availability of the premises of Father Agnel School for all the activities of our parish and very especially this hall where uh, I have come so many times and so many of our people gather here all due to the uh, generosity and availability of uh, Father Carvalho and of course Father Bento too uh, and the Agnel Fathers who are ever ready to help the society and the church for everything. And so uh, on this uh, beautiful occasion of the 50 years of his priestly life, uh, uh, I'm sure scripted in gold by God himself, all that uh, I would like to tell Father Carvalho is uh, that we are very, very uh, grateful to God for you and to you for all your service that has been so wonderfully depicted here on stage by the children and they would probably ha have loved to show so much more of what you are, your wonderful personality, so creative, so dynamic, so committed, so passionate, and never wanting any praise for yourself for all that you do. So I pray on behalf of the Archdiocese of Delhi that you continue growing in these qualities because there is never an uh, end to that. Uh, sky is the limit for growth in virtues and the next year, the years to come, the, the, the uh, 50 years and beyond uh, may uh, definitely be marked by uh, the same and much greater uh, uh, you know, openness to God and the Holy Spirit that you may continue to be a devoted uh, son of uh, Father Agnel and uh, 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 a faithful member of the Society of Pilar a faithful disciple of the Divine Master, our Lord Jesus Christ, ever faithful to Holy Mother, the Church, and ever ready to serve society uh, any time in, in, in every circumstance without uh, considering the cost, without uh, asking how much I'm going to gain out of it, but how much I can give that has been the quality of your life. And may this be so till the end of your life, till your last breath on earth, you may continue to be that, what God has called you to be. And remembering the words always, we are told first when we are ordained deacons, uh, believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you preach. So this is what we are told. And then on the day of our ordination to the priesthood, live what you celebrate. We are celebrating every day the Holy Eucharist. We are called to live what we celebrate. So that may be the motto of your life always. God bless you in every way. We thank you, Your Grace. And now we request Reverend Father Bento to address us all. I have a, a paper written both sides, but I'm not going to read that because I know you are hungry. 
I am here to say, I was telling Bishop, I am here to say Amen. All that the children and the staff have said about it, about Father Karvalo, is just uh, as uh, they call tip of the iceberg. There is plenty more. And uh, I'm sure if the children, if the staff were asked to continue talking about it, one day would not be sufficient. I tell our children in Balbavan, let us storm the heavens and uh, let us storm the heavens that God may give him good health so that he may live for another 50 years to serve us, to take care of us. I just want to read a little. That is the song that the Balbavan children, it's because of this lyrics that I have chosen, I had chosen this song. Jubilee. It's a time of joy and a time of peace to lift our heart, our hearts to God, to recall our graces, to touch, to reach, to build and would the world is one. It's time to give thanks to Almighty with Mary our mother. Open our hearts to the Lord and see the mystery. No more walls, no more chains, no more selfishness, closed doors. We are in the fullness of God's time. It's time to ever greater jubilee. Then that is what we all wish, Father Karvalo, another jubilee, so that we can get together here and celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, Father. This ceremony sure will be incomplete without hearing a few words from his beloved, father's beloved sisters. I invite Ma'am Otilia to address us all. He's screaming from behind, keep it short. And surely I will as much as I can. Pardon my brief address, respected church dignitaries, uh, Father Bento, Father Roy, and friends of my brother. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this joyous celebration. I would, on behalf of my sisters and uh, my siblings back home, I would like to use this occasion to express our deep appreciation and gratitude to our darling brother, Alaric, who we address as Manalik. A jubilee in the life of a religious marks a blessed milestone which calls for celebration and most important an occasion to be grateful to God for choosing and enabling our brother to work his mission for 50 long years. We pray that God continues to endow him, Manalik with health for many more years to come to pursue God's will on earth. God has been kind to our family. As you've heard before, two of my other siblings too have completed 50 years. My sister Marizine uh, and my brother August, not Augusto, but August, who has uh, in the, who have completed 50 years in uh, religious and priestly service. All of us have had a ringside view of the tribulations and jubilations of Manalik's 50-year pilgrimage. It was indeed an experience of faith and learning. For my brother, his commitment to the schools and the charitable works under his mentorship was and is always a priority. The endless challenges he has faced and overcome can only be attributed to his staunch faith in God, who in turn has rewarded him with the grace to make the impossible possible. Back home, my brother has always been a problem solver, our strength during adverse situations. 
His advice and counsel has always been sought by everyone. A lot of you, a lot of folks don't believe in superheroes because they don't have a brother like mine. After the passing away of our dear father, my brother took over the responsibility of being the fulcrum for our family. He has inherited the best traits of both my parents. His qualities such as being rooted deep in faith, discipline, justice, kindness despite having to be tough, his striving for equality and integrity, uh, his outspokenness and ever ready nature of being available for anyone in need, his extreme sensitivity to the needy and the underprivileged, reminds me of my father. His generosity, his kindness, empathy and love for the other, his ability to forgive, his workaholic habits, his simplicity, and I will even add, his gullibility is so much like my mother. For my mother, he was especially an extra dose of adrenaline. Whenever mom was sick and losing hope of recovering, we'd simply fool her saying, you know, mom, your favorite son is coming home. And immediately, instantly, she felt the need to get better, smiling from year to year. Manalik would never miss an opportunity to be there for our parents, as he knew he was their only beacon of hope. We always have looked forward to his homecoming and would make it a point to get together, although his home visits are so brief, sometimes just a couple of hours. Now we understand why, because he has a larger family here. He is the one who teaches by example his untiring quest for serving in various capacities is amazing. We call him our savior. The amount of love and admiration our brother draws from teachers, students, staff, and friends is overwhelming. I'm quite convinced that he is leaving his footprints in the sands of time. I can, I can say with conviction that my family would have never been the same without him. I am so blessed to be his sister. Of course, I know the, the art of getting around him. Although he appears tough and una unapproachable sometimes, he has a heart of gold. I wish to end by saying, you are the perfect elder brother who is liberal but not careless protective but not suffocating, watchful but not stifling. You've turned our grays into bright rays, our blues into beautiful hues. We love you, brother. You are the best brother ever. We pray that God keep you safe. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing your fondest memories with us. I would like to invite His Grace Archbishop Anil Kuto, Bishop Sebastian Mascarenas, Bishop Theodore Mascarenas, and, and Bishop Deepak Toro to present Father Carvalho with the papal blessings. I invite Sir Alistair, Sister Navya, Sir Georgie, Ma'am Kishnani, and Ma'am Latika on stage to present the citation to Father Carvalho. Reverend Father Roy will read the citation. Reverend Father Joe Zalariko Carvalho, SFX, a compassionate visionary, a brave heart engineering lives through education. Born in Olim, Goa on 26th October 1948, he received his primary education in Goa and continued with his studies after joining the Society of the Missionaries of St. Francis Xavier Pilar, Goa in the month of June 1958. 
He was ordained priest on 28th April 1973 in Pilar after completing his degree in philosophy and theology. And at the young age of 25 began the arduous yet eventful journey of this disciple of Jesus. He walked the path of selfless devotion so beautifully and effortlessly. For priesthood was never merely a ministry, rather it has been a way of life for him. And he chose to answer the sacred calling by imparting the previous gift of education and transforming lives. His odyssey from an ordinary human, ordinary young man to an ardent disciple of the Lord began in Bihar and Madhya Pradesh in the year 1975 where he worked with the underprivileged for two years after having worked in schools in Goa from 1973 to 1975. A man of unwavering faith, courage and conviction, he would use every opportunity life presented him with for the betterment of his brethren. During the West Asia oil boom from 1977 to 1979, he was in charge of the international placement services in Bombay and was instrumental in conceptualizing hundreds of new competences and skills set to meet the requirements of the new projects in West Asia. Thousands of skilled and unskilled people in India were recruited, trained and placed on jobs. From steel workers to CEOs of companies in sectors ranging from construction to hotel, oil to aviation and real estate. He was liaising with the world's biggest consultancy firm, Bechtel International. His ability to rise to any challenging situation makes him a class apart. His undying zeal and, un and passion for life finally brought him to Delhi in 1980, whence he continued to weave threads of faith and charity in the society. The four Father Agnel schools, Agnel Jan Kalyan Kendra, and Vidyankur, which nurture thousands, are manifestations of his infinite love for humanity. Well known for his profound wisdom, his immense unfaltering faith in his convictions, and a tenacious spirit, his spirit of learning and appreciating innovative ideas, his dynamism and love for life, and his unconditional affection for his students and teachers alike, all of which manifest through each of his endeavors and continue to magnify with every passing year. Every new educational venture he embarked on in an effort to demystify the reality of the new world ahead not only reiterates his success story but inspires one to realize the true purpose of life, living selflessly to reach out and enhance life so that it becomes a joyous celebration. He is profoundly admired for forever walking that extra mile, walking the road less traveled, transcending all limiting shackles, bending only to uplift, and in being like the good shepherd guiding his flock. In humble tribute or profound admiration for being a servant leader in the mission of education, identifying with the poorest of the poor, being in solidarity with the least and lost, an unflinching commitment to Jesus and to his mission. With deepest regards and respect, students, teachers, friends, superior and community, Agnel region. I now request the principals of our schools to present the citation to Father Carvalho. Please sit down. I request Father Bento to present the citation to the family members of Father Carvalho. Thank you, everyone. And now, the Western Music Choir of Father Agnel School, Delhi, renders the benediction song. We come together in prayers to affirm light and divine grace in the life of our dearest Father. Be 
thank you, Western Music Choir, and thank you, Sir Elijah. <laughs> Dear Father, you've been so much for so many. What we witnessed today was everyone's sheer love and regard for you. And I'm sure everyone is waiting to hear from you. So invite our beloved Father Carvalho. Uh, thank you, Kriti and Purnima, those wonderful young ladies who anchored the show. Please give them a, give, give them a big hand. I must apologize for the time you've spent, but pardon me, the repeating constantly 50 years comes only once. I opposed it because I can't stand the praise. But pardon me, revered Archbishop and the bishops, pardon me, shortening my greeting. I want to be quick. And uh, thank you all of you for being here. I must thank Archbishop, who has been a, a friend, a, a great encouragement, and a great shepherd. A man who will tell you, spade is a spade, and then lead you the right way. Thank you, Archbishop, for being such a, I have a great admiration for you, although you, I know you as a younger, okay? I want to thank for Bishop uh, Sebastian. I worked with him as my superior general, and I know what a taskmaster he is. But I received very nice praises from him, not now, for public consumption, even for my private consumption. So thank you very much for the respect you have. Thank you, Bishop Theodore. But above all, I never expected such great people to be here because I don't deserve it, for several reasons. Okay? Thank you, Justice Mehta Saab. You have been such a great, great help such a great supporter, such a great blessing. And Mr. Chawla is here. And the children, uh, Vijay and uh, Harvansh have gone. Baba and Dhruv is here. When we celebrate our life, and you raise Father Karvalo to the top, that's unfair, that's unjust. These are the people who for 43 years have served our school right from the lower courts to the Supreme Court. I was telling these, our great bishops here, that, uh, that the greatest legal dignitaries in the country, like Fali Nariman, Harish Salve, Gopal Subramanian, Maninder Singh, all they represented us for no fee because Mr. Chawla's favor. Please give them a big hand. <laughs> Remember, Mr. Justice Mehta and Chawla's family, they deserve to be celebrated, not me. They deserve to be celebrated. That is the injustice of the human system, that you only want to put someone up there. After that, I want to thank Father Bento and Father Roy, who have been my angels. I remember 25 years ago when I spoke here. I don't know, I'm staying within my time, please. Give me under 12 minutes. When I was, Vijay is here, I think. So uh, when I, I told that when Father Bento was not in the house, I would shut my doors twice. Not that he would be a gladiator for me, but that was the emotional dependence I have been on Father Bento all my life. The, the external appearances deceive, Srija. They, they deceive. Deep inside, we are so deeply bonded. And the result is what happened in, in, in Delhi and Noida. If people did not deeply agree with one another and deeply respected one another, and deeply dependent on one another, this miracle that have happened here would never have happened. So great clap to Father Bento, who has been an angel. <laughs> and now that mantle has also fallen on Father Roy. They have done all this, slogged and toiled and moiled to put this together. Please give them a behind. They are the ones who need to be celebrated. Because our principals of schools are such lovely kids. I'll die for you, you know that. Thank you, Srija. I know you were cut down, and better because you, I don't know if you'd be able to, to close it anyway. Thank you, Anchal. Thank you, Chanchana, for being such, saying such lovely words to me. I don't deserve it, okay? And truly, I don't deserve it, and I'll tell you why. I want to thank my sisters. Our family has been a great blessing to us. All that I've learned in my life, I learned it from my mother, except a bit of English language and some other languages that I speak, a bit of science and mathematics and management skills, 
The rest I learned from my mother. And that is why we are such a great family. We enjoy it because she taught us everything that we have to learn as a human being. And my father, okay? I have small differences because I was, I, I'm, I have a mother, maybe I'm, I'm mad about it. But I, I owe a lot to my sister, Dr. Alzira, who is number two in the family, who took the mental of taking care of my aging parents so the rest of us, being a doctor, had a career of her own. She left all that to look after my parents so that we could pursue our dreams. And we need to celebrate their life that they spent together. You all tell that Father Karval has done a great thing, love for the poor and all that. My elder sister, who was having a high, very high professional potential ahead of her as a principal of a school, she left there to decide to work in Africa in Zambia, among the poorest of the poor. She worked there for 22 years, had to be brought back only because she was struck with cancer. Otherwise, she would have worked there for much longer life. So these are the people who set the trail blazing for me. My other brother who studied in Europe st st decided to work in East Godavari district in Andhra, in the poorest, and don't take this out of this hall, he was buying children in the market, buying children to release them so he could educate them, return them to their parents. That's what they did. So don't lionize this Father Carvalho. He is only following what others have done. Now coming back to me, I owe everything that I am to God. That's my unadulterated belief. There is nothing I can do if he doesn't do it for me, not I do it for him, he does it for me. And the wonders that have happened in the, in the Delhi system tell you all. Ordinary, our skills, our management, our financial acumen would not lead us where we are. There's something strangely providential in what we do. So that is my personal belief. All that you said to me, my dear friends, with due respect, and appreciation to you is like a movie reel that's happening on the stage. And I see my life size out there. And I feel very embarrassed because you're pulling the rug from under my feet. Because the more you lift me up, the greater my fall will be. So I'm extremely agnostic and allergic to praise. Because this doesn't belong to me. People have not fallen from the skies. My mother carried me nine years in her womb. My family carried me, the education, 25 years, the society I lived. All those people around me helped me to be what I am. So what I do is a payback time. I'm doing nothing new. And above all, you might be strange, I don't believe in achievements or successes. Achievements and successes are external to you. What is internal to you is the purpose of your life. The purpose of one's life is how do you recognize yourself as a person? I recognize myself that God has put me here to make his life shine out to the world. And the moment I do that, I don't do that. And I built all the schools in the world. And I do wonderful things. If I don't do that, I would still be an unsuccess maybe a, maybe a successful achievement outside, but inside me, I would be a failure. That is the mystery of human life. All of us tend to be selfish. You want to appropriate praise to us. I don't want to do that because the moment I do it, I will fail to be myself. Thank you, all of you, dear audience. Sorry for being late. I stayed within my time. And I thank you for doing that. But please remember, all of us have a mission to accomplish. So find your call. And that call would be what makes you great. Not what you build, not what you people talk about me. That doesn't make me great. What makes each one great is our purpose, to find our purpose and live that purpose. If I have done that, I consider myself blessed. I see something very beautiful that I like. There's only one way 
There's only one life to live. If we live it well, once is enough. Thank you. Thank you, dear Father. We thank you and we thank all the lives who have been instrumental in making you who you are. And now I invite our school administrator, Father Agnes School Delhi, Mr. Joseph, to propose the word of thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. I have only one minute time, so I will just finish within one minute time. At the outset, I thank the Almighty on behalf of all of us for blessing us with the gift of Father Kavalu. I also thank the members of his family who came from Goa to be with us on this occasion. And uh, I thank all the most reverend Archbishop Anil Kuto, Bishop Sebastian Mascarenas, Reverend Bishop Theodore Mascarenas, Bishop Deepak Valerian Tauro for accepting our invitation and celebrating the Holy Mass today to invoke the heavenly blessings on all of us. I also thank all the members, all the principals of our sister schools and Justice Mehta, Mr. Chawla family and uh, all the teachers, supervisors and uh, the children of the school who put up this show. Joby, Anil, everybody. So I'm just finishing thank my thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks once again. Thank you all. Now let us stand in attention for the school hymn. Strong! 